If you've been watching my channel recently, you'll know that I'm hoping to post a philosophy video for each day of the month of January. I'm doing it to help myself discover ways in which I'm guilty of what William James was pointing out when he said, a great many people think they are thinking when they are really rearranging their prejudices. One of the questions I've found hard to answer and one that can lead me to replow the same ground again and again is one I came across when I was very young. It's a simple question. Could we be living in a simulation and not be aware of it? That leads to other questions like what are the implications of artificial intelligence and computer simulations and also to an exploration of consciousness. Um, at least it has for me since, since, as I said, I was really, really young. I began to think about these ideas when I read a really intriguing book by Stanislaw Lem. It's called Perfect Vacuum, Perfect Reviews of Non-Existent Books. The essay, which has the most relevance for this book, is Non-Servium. It's an early thought experiment, in fact, and unbelievably, it was published way back in 1971, and it gets to the heart of the moral dilemma which a complex world, simulated world, might create. It's written in a dry style of a book review, which might appear in a scientific journal sometime in the essay's near future. It's by a professor named James Dobbs who introduces the field of personetics. Personetics is the, the programming language for this artificial world and was used for its creation. It's a program that can generate intelligent beings for whom the real world is the world of mathematics. Lim puts a comic satiric focus on the relationship between these simulated beings and their creator. In this way, Lim approaches the old philosophical problems in a new light. The essay presents multiple generations of personoids as the inhabitants of this mathematical world are called. In some ways, the intellectual uh, evolution in personetics mirrors those in our own. For instance, a personoid philosopher reinvents Pascal's wager, and his reasoning is expanded by another personoid philosopher called a Dan 300. A Dan 300 comes to a completely different conclusion from that of Pascal. A Dan asserts that, for in all worlds, it is this. When there is no full certainty, there is no full accountability. This formulation is, by pure logic, unassailable, because it sets up a symmetrical function of reward in the context of the theory of games. Whoever, in the face of uncertainty, demands full accountability, destroys the mathematical symmetry of the game. We have, then, so-called games of non-zero-sum. Even if somebody were to try to defend God using the argument, Adan says, I believe because it is absurd, logic prevents this. What I wish to say is that if one believes in contradiction, one should believe only in contradiction, not at the same time in uncontradictions. If, however, such a dualism is indeed insisted upon, then one thereupon obtains a model of creation as something that is, with regard to logical correctness, patched, and is no longer possible for us to postulate because it's not perfect. Lem ends his story with the voice of Professor Dodd, who directed the experiment and who is in fact the creator of the beings, even though they are more and more certain of his non-existence. He is their creator, but they are sure that they do not know, owe him anything. On the contrary, he is embarrassed that the experiment which created the new world must perish when the university refuses to pay his electric bills. Simulation 
is for Lim an opportunity for, for philosophical experimentation. He's testing some philosophical dogmas and this way showing that many of our beliefs are in fact dubious. The most important of these convictions is the doctrine that the universe must be ordered according to iron laws. Instead, he proposes a universe of change, where everything is contingent. The personoids who seek the logic of their existential situation are, in fact, dependent on the university's funding, probably the most contingent thing in the world. As usual, there is more info in the low bar, including a chapter on this essay of Lim's, and a great chapter on Douglas Hofstetter and Daniel Dennett's book, The Mind's Eye. Thanks for watching. Take care.